Hi everyone, welcome to the channel. My name is Tony and today we're going to take a look at the TPR605 multi-WAN router from a clip that I did in a recent live stream. So if you missed the live stream, you'll be able to check out that router here today in this video. That being said, if this is your first time here, be sure to subscribe and make sure you hit that little bell as well so that you're alerted to when I release new content. Now, let's roll that clip from that recent live stream. Okay, so I bought this about four or five weeks ago. It was like 59, 60 bucks. Willie did a video on it. He did an overview on it and uh, I, I was impressed with it then based on the functionality it had for a $60 router. I got to thinking then, I, you know, since I, I can't get those edge routers that I need to, you know, look for something. I can't, I can't justify a $300 protectly open sense box in the residential home in the price point I'm trying to keep my installs at. So that being said, um, that price point of 50 to a hundred bucks for a home router. And this falls right within that category was working out very, very nicely. So I am going to say that I don't know anything about TP link other than what I saw Willie say on his video. I have not opened this yet. I have not played with it. So we're going to do an unboxing together. So I'm just going to, let's see. Um, so let me just read to you what it says here on the box real quick. So it's a multi-WAN VPN router. It's model TLR605. And I believe they just changed the name. I was on their website the other day. I believe they just changed the name to the ER605. So when you're looking for the software updates, the firmware updates, make sure you search for ER605. It's got up to four WAN port capability, IPsec, OpenVPN, PPTP, L2TP, VPN, load balancing, centralized management. So it can be used for, it can be used independently or as part of the Omada controller. Let's just see what it says here on the side. Let me just flip back to me for a second. No, no sense in you seeing that. So on the side, it's just saying, hold on, need my glasses. That's better. You got 110, 100, 1000 megabits WAN port, 3, 10, 100, 1000 megabits WAN LAN ports, and then 1, 10, 100, 1000 megabits LAN port. Um, package contains the router, a power adapter, RJ45 cable, and an installation guide. And then on the other side, basically, the internet connection is saying can be dynamic, static, PPPoE, PPTP, L2TP. 20 IPsec tunnels, 16 open VPN tunnels, 16 L2TP tunnels, 16 PPTP tunnels, then network features, 802.1Q, VLAN, Multinet DHCP, IP and port bandwidth. So we'll, we'll take a look. I won't read all of them to you. Hopefully we'll get inside this thing and we'll take a look at the quick look at the interface. So yeah, let's let's get this guy opened up. All right. All right, so we have a GNU general public license notice. Here's the installation quick start guide, and I'm going to be referring to that. I normally don't, and it's probably something I should do more frequently, but for something that I have no experience with, we're going to refer to this. Let's see what we got here. So here's the power adapter. Here's the Ethernet cable. Sticky um, felt feet with sticky pads for the bottom, if I guess you're going to keep it on a desk. And then the actual router itself. So if you kind of get an idea on the size, it's pretty small. It's about the size of an Edge Router X SFP. In fact, hold on, I do have one here. Okay, actually the Edge Router Xbox is empty, so I lied. I thought I had one here, but I do have an Ed, the Edge Router XSFP, but I do have the Edge Router that Joe sent me that I recovered. So there you can see 
basically the size difference. Again, it's about the size of the Edge Router SFP version. So, but yeah, not big at all. Nice form factor. So let me switch over now. Let's see if I can if I can do this. So here's my other camera, my close-up camera view. Now this is my cell phone. It's running over AirPlay into an AirPlay receiver on the ATEM. So you got the four ports and the, let's see, you got, and I need my glasses again. I apologize. Let me get the mic out of the way. So we have the WAN port and then two, three, four are WAN LAN. And then you got the one LAN port here. You have your reset button right here. Power light, system light, model number and branding here. Nothing, nothing on the top. On the back of the unit is the Kensington lock right here. And the, where the power plug goes. Venting on the side, on both sides actually. And then on the bottom, you have your serial, sticker with your serial number and model number, etc. So, that being said, let's put that down there for a second. I hope that uh, iPhone camera worked out. Um, it's the first time I've actually used it like that. So, what we're going to do is we're going to get this thing plugged in. So, well, I promised you I was going to read the instructions so I'm going to do that real quick I'm just I'm not going to read them to you I'm just going to glance real quick standalone mode which is what we want Let's see connect the computer to a LAN port on the router with an RJ45 okay if your computer is configured with a fixed address fixed IP change it to obtain an address automatically okay open up a web browser and point it to 192.168.0.1 in the address field Okay, use it. Okay, use the. You're going to create a username and password at the startup. Okay. All right, so let's do that. Simple enough. All right, so I'm going to let's go back here to this. Let me take the power cord. All right, so let's get this plugged in here like so. Let me grab a cable here from my computer. We'll plug it into one of the LAN ports and might as well plug in off the existing network. Let's plug in the cable into the WAN port so that we hopefully can get internet access to this device. All right, so let me take the power plug and plug it in and we'll give it a chance to boot up. Okay, so the power light is on. Let me just switch over to camera eight. Probably can't see it, but the power light there is on. So we'll just give this guy a chance to boot up. All right, let's do this and let's do this and let's point the browser to 192.168.0.1 and see what we got. Okay. So we're at the TP link login page. It says here for device security, please set an administrator account. So instead of giving you a default admin set of credentials you're creating it that's kind of cool that's kind of cool all right so let's just make this Tony Smiraldi and my password for now will be there we go okay and never now after you set the account it appears that it wants you it doesn't just bring you in you've set the account okay so now we're going to sign in All right, and again, we don't want it to remember. 
And you know what, let me do this. Let me get out of super source and bring this to full screen so you guys can see this. I just gotta remember which source that is. Let's see, there we go. And there, hopefully that's a little better for you guys. And let me see if I can just zoom it in a little. There we go. So we got the TLSR, and again, it's been renamed to ER6605 Safe Stream Gigabit Multi WAN VPN Router. So I'm just going to quickly go through everything. So you got your system status here, uh, the WAN, the dynamic IP, which is the connection type, the link is up, the IP address, the subnet mask, etc. Um, you got a little graph here it's showing you your memory usage and your CPU usage. And then if we go to traffic statistics, it shows you your traffic statistics, your IP statistics now. It looks like it's showing everything here but you can enter a range. So if I just wanted to look at what was happening on, I guess this subnet, let's try that. Yeah, no, oops, I see what I did. And then, and say save. And then let's do a refresh and see what happens. Okay, yeah, and it's it's not seeing anything on this subnet, but it, okay. But it should be seeing some things because it, the subnet that it's there we go. Okay, so it is seeing the actual router that's on the edge to the internet. Okay, so yeah, I guess you can control what subnet you want to check. Again, guys, I'm seeing this for the first time as I'm doing it with you. I honestly have no idea what I'm doing. <laughs> so, all right, let's look under WAN. Okay, so I guess here's where you can set and add the different WANs. So if we, there, now we got two WANs, three WANs, kind of like what Willie did in his video. So yeah, you go to your WAN tab, you can pick your connection type. Now you see the different connection types and all the other options. Again, I don't want to, belabor this too much, but I just want to take you through it. So you got your LAN, MAC address information, switch information, your VLAN information. And then, I don't know if you've noticed, but as I'm switching tabs on the left side, you also have all these different DHCP server, the client list. Oh, you can do address reservations, which is awesome. I like that. And you have, you know, sometimes multiple tabs for you can mirror this device. You got your port configurations, your port status, lots of lots of stuff. Um, your preferences, IP group, time range, VPN IP pool, service type. Here's your NAT. And again, virtual servers, port triggering, your DMZ zone, ALGs, right? Bandwidth control. I'm just going to go through this quickly because I do want to bring this to a close. I just want, my goal was to get it out of the box and see if I could even get into it today. Um, session limits, got load balancing, online detection, link backup, lots of stuff for a $59 device. Now I see what Willie, why Willie was so impressed with this. I'm going to have to really play with this guy. Enable ARP spoofing. Attack, defense, access control, behavior control. You can do some web filtering, web, fil web group filtering, URL filtering, lots of stuff. Your VPNs, IPsec, L2TP, PPTP. Uh, probably have going to do when, an update when we get off just to see if there's anything else added to the interface than what's here. Authentication settings. I think this does a captive portal as well. Then you have your user management, configuration backup, authentication status, services. It has dynamic DNS. Looks like it only has four. They haven't added any since Willie did his video. Maybe in the future update. UPnP, which by default is disabled. Now under system tools, Got your admin setup, remote management control, system settings, lots of stuff in here. Management, factory default, restore, backup and restore, reboot the device, 
do your firmware upgrade here. We're running version 1.0.0, build 202.00.904, etc. cetera. Uh, control settings, SN, SNMP, diagnostics, time settings, defaults to Pacific time. I'm not going to bother changing that now. System log. Wow. Lots of stuff on this router. So, yeah, um, I don't know how it performs. I'm not sure how it lasts over time. Um, but if it's anything as far as its performance and durability, like an edge router, um, for the ton of features that it has here, it has a lot of features in the GUI from what I can just see initially that um, you have to go under the hood to the command line for the edge router. So. So there's a first look and overview of the TPR605 multi-WAN router. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. Be sure to check out some of the other videos that I've done up above. Remember to subscribe, like, and share this video. And I want to thank you for using the Amazon affiliate links. I know they don't change your price, but they do help out the channel. My name is Tony with Quick Tech Solutions. As always, please stay safe. Thank you for watching, and we'll see you next time. And as always, I'd like to thank our Patreon supporters. And if you would like to help support the channel, there's links to the Patreon page and PayPal down in the video description.